Hello, dear spectators. This is Attila Yeshilada. You are at Real Turkey Channel. And yes, you are not dreaming. I'm dropping a second video within a week. Miracles do happen. Well, essentially, to me, YouTube content creation is a matter of inspiration. You have to be inspired. You have to find a topic that deeply intrigues you. And then you have this insatiable desire to share your thought with your ever dwindling audience. And several such events happened in the last few days, which I will reflect in my videos in the coming days. Today, I want to talk about Turkey's sanctions trouble. By the way, let me take my glasses off. Even though I'm as blind uh, as a blind thing, uh, it also cuts down on the reflection and you may have a more pleasant viewing experience. Turkey has been in sanctions trouble since the times of Moses and Jesus, I believe, or Muhammad. And I've shot several videos about that, though you have to dig deeper into the archive to find those. But the latest episode is fairly serious and scary. Scary because Turkey is in the midst of an economic stability program, belt tightening program, austerity program, the success of which uh, to a certain extent depends on Turkey's ability to find FX loans and to attract uh, FX investment, you know, hot money or FTI, foreign direct investment. And that lag of the austerity program is conditional on Turkey getting a long wall with the United States and EU because its experiences with China and Russia have demonstrated to global emerging markets its fund managers if the source of the destination or the destination of the investment is not friendly with the United States or Europe then it's more likely than not uh, your investment prospects will be cut short because of sanctions threats uh, or uh, essentially the static in the channel that's created by bickering between the leaders and politicians of uh, the destination and source country this is why recent threats and very specific and frightening threats threats by Mr. Brian Nelson, who is the undersecretary in the Treasury Department in charge of uh, sanctions enforcement. I'm sure he has a formal official title, which at this point I forget. What happened is, um, for the second time in the year, he visited Ankara and Istanbul, and in his press conference or public statement, he made it very clear that the United States is extremely unhappy with sanctions violations of Turkish entities to Russia. And as importantly, that Turkish entities are helping Hamas finance its terror operations in Gaza Strip. Is there any evidence how far do these violations go and what does the United States intend to do? And finally, how would that affect Turkey's economic prospects are the issues that I will briefly analyze in this video. Are Turkish companies violating sanctions on Russia by re-exporting dual-use goods? Yes, definitely. I mean, there is no doubt about it. Every other country does that. I'm sure it happens in Poland, I'm sure it happens to the Czech Republic, etc. Simply because, well, Russia is there and is willing to pay, and there are a lot of unscrupulous business people who say, the hell with the government, I'm gonna make mine. Does it go any deeper? Are we talking about a situation like Mr. Reza Zara, the notorious gold smuggler who whitewashed or laundered up to $15 billion of funds to Iran through Turkish state banks? I, I don't see it. And I think I have enough credibility as a dissident uh, of uh, Mr. Erdogan run uh, to make that statement realistic. These sums are small, maybe $500 million since the beginning of the Ukraine war. Um, and I don't think Mr. Erdogan sanctions those or even turns a blind eye. I'm sure enforcement can be stricter, made stricter. Uh, that's a problem, but just find the map of Turkey, see how close we are uh, and how many ports there are on the Black Sea coast uh, within a couple of hours of uh, ferry distance or cargo ship distance from Russia. The second problem is Hamas financing. Hamas has a very strong infrastructure in Turkey and also a lot of sympathizers. While most, well, almost all Turks are also Muslim and we do feel sympathy for the Palestinian plight. Uh, and a small minority of Muslims are also fundamentalist Muslims pro Sharia or those who think that you know Christian and Jewish Jewish countries are evil and it's you know God's uh, command to people uh, to help Hamas but these are in a distinct minority nevertheless of all the countries where Hamas can operate including Qatar Turkey is the country where uh, money laundering or finding financing is extremely easy so far though I think one fund management company or wealth management company has been officially sanctioned I am fairly sure there is is more simply because Turkey's uh, supervisory and surveillance authorities like 
the Mossack, which is OFAC for United States, the Banking Regulatory Committee, BRSA, or Turkey's Capital Markets Board, Turkey's SEC, are set up to deal with this kind of a thing. They simply don't have the systems in place or don't have the personnel to detect whether a company under their supervision, supervisory uh, uh, direct, uh, direction is helping Hamas whitewash funds. Nevertheless, obviously, um, supervision and surveillance can be tightened. And perhaps that's all there is to it. The United States was very unhappy about Turkey's lack of effort to enforce these sanctions and a message was given. End of the story. Hamas will shift its fundraising activities to Qatar or any other Gulf country and Turkey will be more vigilant in terms of supervising stuff that goes from Europe to Russia or nowadays from Europe to Turkey to Georgia, Azerbaijan, Central Asian countries and then on to Russia. End of the story. I think Turkey can do its part though I suspect that United States has other mouthwish. There are two that come to mind. A, United States and in fact entire NATO is extremely unhappy for Turkish food dragging in terms of red fine Swedish accession. I mean, essentially one single country defers or creates obstacles to NATO's long-term strategy planning in terms of dealing with Putin. And that's obviously unexcusable. In some sense, these warnings about sanctions violations may be a hidden or concealed message or a message with ulterior motive to Ankara that, you know, sort out the Swedish accession thing. Otherwise, we're going to crack down whether this is right or wrong doesn't make a difference. Might is right. Second reason may be Mr. Erdogan's hell-raising in terms of the Gaza Strip. Look, all the Muslims in the world are angry with what's happening in Gaza. Again, I'm not judging Israel or Hamas. To me, anybody who takes human life is a sinner and ought to be executed to the full degree of the law, international law if necessary. Uh, but the way things work, obviously, even if Israel shares most of the blame for what happened, they are pro-Israel. Israel is a Western country, a country with a culture that's in the Judeo-Christian tradition. Uh, also, it's more or less the only democratic country in the Middle East, West, Middle East along with Turkey. And Mr. Erdogan is really making it difficult for uh, United States and the European countries uh, to deal with Israel, to tame Israel, simply because uh, Mr. Erdogan is constantly blaming United States and European countries for aiding and abetting Israel, for enabling it, and that just doesn't sit well. Why it doesn't it sit well? A, Hey, Turkey can create trouble for Israel. For instance, recently Turkish NGOs filed a complaint with the International Criminal Court to have uh, Israel prosecuted for crimes against humanity. Uh, even though Israel is not part of the treaty that uh, uh, led to the establishment of International Criminal Court, obviously a court case will be you know, highly publicized and would uh, somewhat hurt uh, Israel's image. I don't think anything serious is going to come out of it. More importantly, by constantly harping on Israel and cursing it, Erdogan increases its follower in the Arab world, the citizens, not the leadership. And in the past, such efforts have led to retaliation by Gulf countries, which essentially have cut all funding Turkey. Simply because, let's face it, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, all the Sunni Muslim nations, save Qatar, think Hamas is evil, uh, and it's an obstacle to pursuing the engagement with Israel, and the sooner it disappears from the world, the better it is for everyone, for them actually. So the leadership is somehow forced to compete with Erdogan in terms of forcing uh, and even perhaps establishing sanctions on Israel, which spoils the game in the Middle West, in the Middle East. So the second requirement by the United States could be for Mr. Erdogan to tone down his rhetoric and stop his efforts to have Israel prosecuted. Now these conditions are much more difficult to fulfill, obviously. In terms of Swedish accession, Turkey has promised several times it may happen at the beginning of the next year, but it is more likely than not it will be delayed until after March local elections, simply because this is an issue where, you know, people in Turkey usually blame the United States and they think uh, ratifying Swedish accession is actually doing a favor to the United States with no particular benefit for Turkey. Uh, both in terms of Swedish accession and um, supporting Hamas or complaining about Israel, Mr. Erdogan faces a lot of uh, competition at home. I covered this in my video titled why 
is Erdogan supporting Hamas simply because there are a lot of Islamist uh, and conservative parties in Turkey and they're outdoing Erdogan in terms of uh, blaming Israel and at some point the issue might reach the point where voters may migrate to these smaller parties. Now if these are the case then we're going to talk about retaliation. What could the United States do to make sure Turkey complies with its uh, requirements or conditions of ratifying Swedish accession and uh, reducing uh, the rhetoric on Israel? Well, you know, clearly sanctioning more Turkish companies, uh, exploring whether these companies and persons have links to the AKP government or AKP members uh, is something that would uh, deeply hurt Erdogan's interests. Two, by simply talking up the rhetoric of, of sanctions we have seen in the past, such as in the past the Bronson case, foreign commercial banks become very reluctant to lend to Turkey, so that could lead to another currency crisis. And of course, fund managers, as I've said, are not very eager to invest in countries that have troubles with the United States and EU. And at the end, Biden could uh, defer the subject to the Congress through Democrat, which may pass another act, Magnitsky Act type of sanctions against Turkey. I don't think any of this is too likely in the short term, but unless Turkey, Ankara does something about the Swedish accession and either cutting off all venues for Hamas to launder money through Turkey or toning down its rhetoric on Israel, retaliation is a strong possibility after Turkey's local elections. Clearly, all my recent videos, such as the last one, which talks about how Turkish lira is certain to appreciate in real terms in 2024, are conditional on these bad case scenarios not happening. If I see a realistic possibility that the United States or EU are gearing up uh, to retaliate to Turkey for its for her bad behavior, then I would change my scenarios. For the time being, this simply delays, delays Turkey's economic recovery but doesn't pose a significant threat to Turkish markets or Turkish economy in my view. Thank you very much for watching Real Turkey channel videos. Uh, I appreciate your comments, though I don't answer all of them uh, because of a, you know, paucity of time, but hopefully in the new year I will do so. If you like the video, subscribe, share it with your friends, and send me a comment, which I really cherish. This is Atilaya Shalara saying goodbye from Istanbul.